Well, and so let's move on to another aspect of of this whole um, you know occurrence, and let's let's get away from wireless computers. Let's talk about cell phones because our school has a policy. It's an elementary school. It has a policy mm-hmm. that no cell phones are to be turned on in the school or on the school grounds at any time. Mm -hmm. So that's the policy. Now, you know, enforcing that policy is an entirely different um, thing. And I've said to the principal, listen, these are children. Mm -hmm. They are texting each other underneath their desk. (laughs) They are, they are, as soon as recess, they go outside because, you know, my kids are telling me, look, so-and-so has their cell phone on in their pocket all day and he's sitting two desks away from me. Mm -hmm. So the principals said, well, if you come and tell me, I will... I will take the phone away from that child for the day and I will explain to that child, okay, great. But you know what else the principal said? On the other hand, she said, you know, I have parents like you coming in and your position is that cell phones and wireless computers are dangerous and you want them out of the school. She said, I have a whole other set of parents coming into me saying, why are you making my child turn off their cell phone? My child should be accessible to me all day long. I want my child's cell phone left on so that I can text or I can reach him when I need to. But why would they need to reach them during class? Well, because they're all psycho about this. They've all gone nuts over this technology. Like you said, you go out for dinner and they're checking it every half an hour. People Mm -hmm. have gone a bit crazy. Mm -hmm. So, But I found it interesting seeing it from her perspective that She's she's being like she's being like whammed from both sides because mm-hmm. she's got one set of parents saying this and she's got another set of parents saying that. Mm-hmm. And I've seen even you know when I've tried to share the information with other parents, um, I've got they don't them, want to know. know. Mm-hmm. Oh no, they're like you know you you should not be doing this. Take me mm-hmm. off the list. How you know you're abusing the list and then mm-hmm. making jokes. Oh look, I've got my cell phone. Am I going to get a brain tumor? You know, ha ha. Yeah. You know, so it's it's the resistance is quite um, entrenched from all sides. It is. Yeah. But but now let me ask you another another scenario because all right, so I got a neighbor. All right, she's got cordless phones that she's on a lot. Mm-hmm. She's got two computers. Uh, that are both wireless, mm-hmm. and the adults are on one and the children are on the other. The children have Nintendos that they play wireless because they play each other. Mm-hmm. And her kids are all under the age of eight. She's got three kids under the age of eight. Now, she's looking at her family going, look, if this technology is so dangerous, somebody would be showing some signs of something. And I'm saying, well, maybe you don't know what signs to look for. So mm-hmm. based on what you know, with that kind of oh, and her house is also a thousand meters away from a power line, a, a mm-hmm. huge power line with cell phone towers sitting on top of it. So she does have the other exposure coming into her house as well. Mm-hmm. What should she look for in her kids as a checklist to go? Are they doing this? Are they exhibiting this? So that maybe what she perceives as her children not being effective, affected mm-hmm. by this, maybe they mm-hmm. actually are. What would you tell her to look for? Well, the symptoms of electrical sensitivity are quite long, but I'll, I'll list the most common ones. Um, they include difficulty sleeping, so not having a restful sleep at night, uh, waking up in the morning tired, feeling fairly tired during the day. Some people ca- call it chronic fatigue, and, and those are the symptoms. Having body aches and pains, which seems to be more of a problem in, in adults rather than children. But children do get headaches, and um, that's very uncommon for kids to, to develop headaches. Um, difficulty concentrating, problems with poor short-term memory, uh, difficulty focusing on anything. Uh, having mood disorders, either depression, anxiety, irritability. Uh, skin problems is another one that comes up quite regularly where you just develop a rash or something on your skin that, you know, might go away, might stay, um, but it doesn't... Does it look be- like eczema? Does it, it could you? look like eczema. Right. Actually, eczema can can be exacerbated by this, and it can clear up when you're no longer exposed. We've had one, one individual um, whose health, her eczema virtually went away uh, when they stopped their exposure, um, but I don't know if that will happen, you know, for everyone. Um, so skin problems is another one. Nausea, uh, some dizziness, in severe cases vertigo. Uh, nightly urinations, uh, we find that adults have to go more regularly at night and children might bed wet when they're exposed to this radiation, whereas they don't do it when they're not exposed. Nosebleeds actually is one of the symptoms uh, in some cases. So there, there are really quite a few, oh, ringing in the ears, um, difficulty with vision, 
um, that's sporadic. It, it changes. Your vision goes bad, and then it then it improves again. Um, these any, are di- the, any digestive or bowel? Um, I, ha- I don't know about things like uh, constipation or diarrhea, but nausea is one of one of the problems. And very often, individuals who are sensitive, they just don't have an appetite. They just don't want to eat because they're feeling kind of nauseous. Mm. Gotcha. So the you know so once again you know th- these could be brought on by a lot of things so it's not just this but if if kids have those symptoms I'd be very concerned about that uh, and just by reducing- and like you said like you said these things can be brought on by a lot of things and so the way to test would be switch to wired computers get rid of the cordless phone in the house and even just reducing that amount of exposure and and get them not to play their Nintendos on wireless mode anymore. Um, If they play their Nintendos just regularly, is that okay? Well, oh yes, yeah, that should be fine. As long as it's wired, it shouldn't be a problem at all. And what about a Wii? I haven't ever measured a Wii, so I I don't, I don't want to hazard a guess on that. But that's obviously something I should do because kids are exposed to that. So. Well, and there's more and more toys coming out that have a wireless component. Yeah, I don't buy any of those for my grandkids at all because I just don't want them exposed. You know, and as much fun as they are to play with, you know, it's, uh, um, you know, they can find something else that's not not um, exposing them.